Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, let's begin our worship uh, prayer meeting now. Pray for pre worship prayer. Father, we pray for an anointing of the Holy Spirit for Pastor Braden Wong as he spake. May the Holy Spirit, through his message, strengthen the weary, encourage the afflicted, and offer healing to the broken. Bless the worship team this morning as they seek to lead our church in worship. Help them to overcome any discouragement by the power of the Holy Spirit and so that their worship will not be hindered in any way. Pray for all who are serving this morning to will possess an attitude of service to others. Give them the grace to be sensitive to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Name we pray, Amen. Please be seated. Uh, we pray for privacy prayer. As we read and hear God's word today, we pray that we could hear the voice of the Father. We ask that the Holy Spirit would be at work opening our ears to hear and our heart to receive His Word, transform our life into the likeness of Christ. Please arise and pray. Praise you, Father. I pray for the, those who serve in, in the ushering, in the <coughs> uh, music department, and everything, Lord, that it will be led by the Holy Spirit, that we will open our hearts to receive your word and hear you properly. I pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, we pray for praise kids, preteens, and tough you. Equip and guide those who are leading today. Provide wisdom, guidance, and direction to the children, teens, and youth so that they will build a firm foundation in Jesus. Please arise and pray. Father, we know that children and youth ministry are extremely important. As this is the stage where their spiritual foundation are being laid. So as this ministry runs today, we want to commit it into your hands. We pray for the teachers and the leaders who will be taking care of the children, the teens and the youth, that you will give them wisdom and strength so that they will lead the little ones into you, your path. At the same time, we also pay, pray for the children and the young people that you instill in them a passion for you, a passion for your word, that they will be able to grow strongly 
in you, O Lord. So therefore, we commit these ministries into your hands and may you be with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated.
Good morning, church. Morning. Welcome back to the house of the Lord. Um, let us start our morning this morning. Let's start our worship with praise and worship this morning. Let's rise. Let's sing this first song together. Father, we come before you this morning, him, Lord, to give praise and to him we acknowledge, Lord, we how unworthy we are, Lord, to come before the way, feet worship him, of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Let the King time, above Lord. all kings, the Lord above all Lords, and to Lord, worship you, you, Lord, just as happened. we are. We thank you for it is only through your grace, Lord, and, Lord, and your love for us that we and have we this thank you for privilege, Lord, to come before you, to worship you, and to be called your child. Help Go us, Lord, not us. to take this privilege for granted, you. Lord. Help us, Lord, to realize the magnitude of, everything you of do, this you do it wonderful for us, gift Lord. that you have given to Even us, as Lord. We come help before us, Lord, to pour our Thank hearts out to you, for your presence to with worship us. you, Lord, with all that because we are and all that, all that we have. Us nor us. Lord, we pray this morning that our you worship to you, will be acceptable and pleasing to your sight. And may you and you alone, Lord, be magnified and glorified in this place, Lord. Let us Lord, make the rest nothing, of our time to nothing as we about us, Lord. You. Let us make this nothing about praise us, but all about you. For you Lord, alone, you Lord, deserve our hearts, all Lord, our praise and all our worship. We love you, and Lord, we and we praise you. you. In Jesus' name we pray. And know what you want us to learn this week and throw our life as well, Lord. I commit the rest of our time to hand. You be with us. And I commit everything to hand, Lord. In Jesus' name. Let us all arise as we wish you a lot.
all along, all along, Lord. And help us, Lord, to rem- remind ourselves of that faithfulness as, as we take this next step forward. Whether we can see it or we can't, help us, Lord, to trust in you, Lord. And help us, Lord, to believe that you will see us through again, just like you have in the past, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to us. Thank you, Lord. you 
righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hope, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is only bound to His. Oh, how strange and deep. I can sing all is mine, yet not I, but you Christ in me. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken. For by my side, my Savior, He will stay. Lord, that this gift did not come cheap. It did not come easy, Lord, for you. It did not come easy for your son, Jesus. But you gave it to us freely, Lord, because you love us. 
Lord, we pray that you help us to walk each and every day of our lives worthy of that gift that you have given to us. Help us, Lord, to walk with you each and every day of our lives through the hills, through the valleys. Help us, Lord, to cling fast and tight to you, Lord, even when it feels like the waves around us are pulling us away. Help us, Lord, to remember the hope we have in you and you alone, Lord, not in anyone else in this world, not in anything else in this world, Lord. For you and you alone, Lord, are the one that can satisfy our deepest desires. Thank you, Lord, for your love for us. We love you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, once again, welcome to all of you. For all of those who are online, welcome to our Sunday service today. And all of us here in the sanctuary, welcome back to church. Um, this morning, we want to welcome a very special speaker, Pastor Brandon. Let's give him a hand. Thank you for coming to share God's Word with us. And we also have a newcomer in our midst, um, Chin Yi Yen. Can you see who is Chin Yen? Welcome to our church. We're very happy to have you here with us. All right. Um, before we move further, we have some announcements to make today. So let us see. Let's put an announcement up on the board. Our first announcement today is the Chinese Bible study. It is on today at 3 p.m. Um, and next up, we have copies of our Daily Bread devotionals um, available. So if you want a copy, just feel free to take um, the devotion on your way out. And also, if you want to make a contribution, you can do so at the counter as well to help with the cost of postage and printing. And just a gentle reminder, next week we'll be observing the Lord's Supper. So if you plan on worshipping uh, with us online next week, please remember to prepare your cup and the bread at your own homes. And also let us uh, remind ourselves to come next week uh, prepared to remember the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, every month we will have a charity offering that we collect for a certain charity. For, so for this month, the charity collection is designated for the Faith, Hope, Love Hospice Care Malaysia. Now, this team is a team of um, uh, people who provide Christian-based hospice and palliative care to terminal patients. And they are, a, they are a ministry and they rely heavily on donations. So, um, just to encourage all of us to give generously to help them in their ministry. Next up, our church is going to have a big event. We're going to celebrate the Mid-Autumn Festival. And the theme this year is Mid-Autumn Joyful Family Night. So it will be a night of fun and games with our families. We'll be playing games with our families. So there will be a lot of fun, fellowship and some food also provided. Now because uh, we'll be playing games so we need to prepare the materials. So we need your help to register as soon as possible and also to indicate the number of people that uh, is coming together with you, your family members. Alright, so we can prepare accordingly. So you can mark your calendars for 3rd of September, it's a Saturday, and registration will start at 6.30pm. Alright, next up, um, our church kindergarten, Praise Kids CDC, is looking for suitable Christian teachers. So if you are interested or if you know of anyone who is interested, you can um, approach uh, Teacher Lin or Teacher Yong. And last but not least, we have a joyful... Um, joyful announcement to make. If you remember last week, uh, Brother Joseph was up here giving the sermon and he mentioned that his wife will be delivering their baby in a few days. So the precious baby boy is here. His name is Gabriel Tan. So we want to... Yeah, let's give them a... So we want to congratulate Joseph, Litain, Jana and their whole families. And also remember to keep them, the families, in prayer as they um, adapt to being now a family of four. All right? Okay, that's all the announcements for today. Now we have come to a time of offering. Can we please have the ashes forward? Let's pray for the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we acknowledge, Lord, that everything that we have, Lord, comes from you. Thank you, Lord, for providing for all of our needs. 
And we pray now, Lord, that even as we give back a portion of what you have blessed us with, Lord, teach us to give with a cheerful heart. We pray for the, the offering, Lord, that you will bless it and use it, Lord, um, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Scripture reading this week is taken from the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 1 to 11. Verse 1. Now the Philistines gathered their forces for war and assembled at Soko in Judah. They pitched camp at Ephes Damin between Soko and Ezekah. Saul and the Israelites assembled and camped in the valley of Elah, and drew up their battle line to meet the Philistines. The Philistines occupied one hill and the Israelites another, with the valley between them. A champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. He was over nine feet tall. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels. On his legs, he wore bronze greaves and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod, and its iron point weighed 600 shekels. His shield bearer went ahead of him. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why do you come out and line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. Then the Philistines said, This day I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. I will invite Pastor Brandon up. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Before I preach the word of the Lord to you this morning, let us pray. Father, we give you thanks that once again this morning we can gather as a church to worship you, to praise you, for indeed you are our Lord and you are great. And now as we want to learn from your word, we ask that you continue to lead us, teach us, and that we are able to see your wondrous deed. So we commit this time of learning into your hands. Lead us, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Let me begin by sharing one of my most favorite Christian movie. Uh, maybe some of us, among, uh, some among us today, have watched this movie before. It's called Facing the Giants. You see, this movie is about a football coach, American football, uh, uh, American football. The coach name is Grant Taylor, and he has many difficulties in life. You see, as a football coach, he has yet to post a winning record in his six-year tenure. And his team is doing badly as they began his seventh season. Well, other than that, there's also problems in his house. He has a leaking roof, broken appliances, an unreliable unre car that breaks down all the time. And as if the situation is not bad enough, he is also facing infertility. And in the midst of these struggles, Gran, the coach, turned to the Lord for help. And he also calls his family, his football team, to do likewise. And when they seek help from God, God indeed helped them. And in, in the movie, we see how Gran, in the end, received a pay raise. He is able to fix his house. Uh, someone donated a new car for him. His wife is finally pregnant. And their football team eventually made it to the state championship game. But in the state championship game, what they need to face is a three-time defending champion. And their names are the Richland Giants. You see, the Giants are a much larger team. They are more experienced as well. And they are very tough. Yet, Grant Taylor's team were willing to place their trust in the Lord. And therefore, they continue to have faith and God bring them victory. I really enjoyed this movie because of the message it portrays. Of course, in the end, we know that life may not necessarily be that smooth. Lah. It does not promise that oh, once we trust in God, then everything will be all right. But I think what the, the movie portrays is that faith in the midst of difficulties, that faith when facing giants. And when we are able to have that faith, indeed the Lord will work in us. Because in, in our life, there are many giants. The giants may come in form of difficulties, struggles, problems. Maybe even enemies, people who are oppressing you in your life, and disappointments. But what we know today is that God is able to overcome all of those giants. And therefore, my sermon today is facing our giants. To face the giants we have in our life. So the question is, how are we supposed to face it? Yeah? Especially as we reflect on the difficulties in our life that sometimes makes things unbearable. How are we going to face all of this? So today we'll be looking at a classic Sunday school story, which all of us are very familiar with. A story about a young man facing a giant. And this is the story of David and Goliath from 1 Samuel chapter 17. So if you have your Bibles, let us now turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17. As just now, verse 1 to 11 has been read to us, now I'll read to you verses 32 to 51, so that we can complete the whole chapter. So we'll be looking at verses 32 onwards, 32 to 51. And this is what it says. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him, referring to Goliath. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth. And he has been a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father. 
And when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it from his mouth. And if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, for he has defied the armies of the living God. And David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul clothed David with his armour. He put a helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. And David strapped his sword over his armour. And he tried in vain to go, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot go with this, for I have not tested them. So David put them off. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's pouch. His sling was on his hand, and he approached the Philistine. And the Philistine moved forward and came near to David with his shield-bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. And the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will struck, strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give, your, your, I will give the dead bodies of the hosts of the Philistine this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's. And He will give you into our hands. When the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put in his hand in his back, and took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the ground. So David prevailed over, over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand of David. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine and took his sword, and drew, drew it out of his shift, and killed him, and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel and Judah rose with a shout, and pursued the Philistine as far as Gath, at the gates of Akron, so that the wounded Philistines fell on the way from Shararaim, as far as Gath and Akron. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, it begins with a battlefront. The Philistines gathered their army and they prepared to fight against Israel. And on the other side, we also see that King Saul and the Israelites also prepared to give the Philistine a battle. Nobody is going down without a fight. But the Philistines have a secret weapon. They have a champion named Goliath. 
in verses 4 to verses 7, tells us that Goliath was six cubit and a span. So showing that he is larger and stronger than an average man. He also had a helmet of bronze, armed with a coat of mail, which weighed 5,000 shekels of bronze. He has bronze armour on his leg, a javelin of bronze slung behind his shoulder. A shaft of spear was like a weaver's beam, and the spearhead weighed 600 shekels of iron. He also had a shield-bearer who went before him. So in human terms alone, Goliath is invisible, invincible. And Goliath taunts the Israelites saying, Give me a man that we may fight together. But verse 11 tells us that King Saul and the Israelites were dismayed. They were greatly afraid. Nobody wants to face Goliath. And Goliath continues to taunt the Israelites for 40 days. We probably thought that the Israelites were cowards. But if it were me, I don't want to face Goliath. We all probably don't want to face Goliath. But one thing we can notice at the early part of this story is that God is not in the story. Then afterwards, we have a turning point in the plot. We have David, the younger son of Jesse. See, David was not part of Saul's army. But in verse 17, his father Jesse told David to bring some supplies to his brothers and their commanders. So David went to the encampment and greeted his brothers. So while David was talking to his brother, Goliath came up to the front line and said the same words again, challenging the Israelites. And this time, David was there and he got to hear Goliath's challenge. But David was not afraid. He was not dismayed. In fact, he was offended by what Goliath said. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Said David. Now, God is in the story. David mentions about God. And so David went to Saul and offered to fight Goliath. But Saul was hesitant because this is Goliath we are talking about. And David is but a boy. Yet David knew that the Lord who saved him from the lions and the bears will also save him from Goliath. So Paul, uh, Saul agreed and he offered his armour. But David is not used to it. Well, what do we expect? David is only a shepherd boy. He's not a soldier. So he put them off. And all David brought to the battle were some common tools that a shepherd would have. A staff, a sling, and he took five smooth stones from the river. But the most important thing that David brought was his faith in the living God. So when David went before Goliath, Goliath probably was expecting a mighty warrior. He has waited for 40 days for someone to take up his challenge. And now finally someone came out. Yet, before him is just a young and ruddy boy, and a handsome one as well. And he mocked David and cursed him by his gods. But David wasn't affected. 
he knew that the Lord will surely deliver Goliath into his hands. So after being challenged by David, Goliath rushes forward. It doesn't matter. Young boy is still a challenger. He's going to kill David. And then David took a stone and with his sling, he slung the stone and struck Goliath on his forehead. The strong and mighty champion fell on his face to the ground. Then David killed him with his, his Goliath's sword and cut off his head. Goliath is defeated. He didn't even stand a chance. And the Philistines, they all fled the battle. Israel was victorious. We probably heard about this story many times. To the point that some of us already memorize it. It's the same old story. But the question is, what can we learn from this story? And therefore today, I think there are at least three things that we can learn from the story on David and Goliath. The first point is overestimating the giant. Is it after... 1 Samuel chapter 17 introduces the battle between Philistine and Israelites. We are introduced with this warrior named Goliath. You see, by describing his high-tech armor, his weapons in verses 4 to 7, it seems to portray that Goliath is undefeatable. He is like the boss that you have to face in the final level of a game. And standing before such an enemy, it is to no surprise that Saul and the Israelites were afraid. They knew they cannot face him. No one in the Israelite army can face him. But is Goliath really that scary and intimidating? Perhaps there is something else that the story wants us to know about Goliath. Perhaps we are overestimating this giant. You see, when David enters into the story, he also heard the challenge of the giant. But unlike Saul and the Israelites, David was not intimidated. But in fact, he was offended. Some may say that David is just a young boy who doesn't really understand the severity of the situation, and he just took it lightly. In simple terms, David does not know what he's saying. But that is definitely not the case. Because from verses 34 to 37, we know that David, as a shepherd, has come across life-death situation. Facing lions and bears is not a little case. It's a big deal. So David actually knew how dangerous it is to face a powerful and strong enemy. So he's not looking down on the situation. He's not being naive. Yet how could David be so calm about the situation? The answer is in verses 37. David says that the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. The reason why David is not afraid is because God is in David's picture of the situation. You see, when God is out of the picture then Goliath does seem like an undefeatable and fearsome enemy. But when God is brought in the picture, suddenly Goliath is not all that intimidating anymore. See, during the battle, Goliath even asked David in verse 43, he says, Am I a dog that you come with me with sticks? 
Because Goliath is actually mocking David for bringing shepherd tools into a war. Shepherd tools that, that are used to chase away wild dogs or wolves. But ironically, in front of the Lord, Goliath is indeed a dog that is threatening the Lord's flock. And it is, it is also interesting that how the name of Goliath in the whole chapter 17 actually only a, a, a appears twice. His name only appears twice. The rest of the time, Goliath is only called the Philistine. And this is intentional. I think it gives a picture that there is no need to remember his name, for he is significant. He is just a Philistine, like the rest of them. So perhaps the reason why the author describes Goliath's armour and weapons in detail is not to make him look invincible, but rather it is to show that these armours and these weapons are nothing before the Lord. And David understood this. In verse 45, he says, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today, we encounter various giants in our life. The giants can be in form of difficulties, problems, struggles, opposition, and even persecution. Every one of us have different giants. And I think the most fearsome giant in our life is sin, causing us to stumble, causing us to do what is wrong, causing us to draw away from God. And in facing these giants, it is easy for us to be intimidated and be afraid. As we face them, we wonder, how can we ever overcome them? When a problem too big arises in our life, sometimes we wonder, am I going to survive past this? Sometimes in our struggle with sin, we also wonder, it's so hard. I cannot overcome it. But perhaps we too have been overestimating our giants in life. And that happens when we fail to put God in the picture. We are only looking at the giant and looking at ourselves. We are just giving this comparison. And God is nowhere to be found. Therefore, we need to remember that there are no problems or obstacles that God cannot help us overcome. So the first thing that we learn from this story is to not overestimate the giant. Because before the Lord God Almighty, there is no giant. So we need to be like David. As soon as he entered into a situation, he only thought about God. And that is what we have to do as well. As we are facing our different giants in our life, remember the Lord. Bring Him into the picture. Bring Him into the story. And this leads us to the second point, which is defeating the giant. So when David enters into the story, one would wonder how on earth would this young and vulnerable boy would defeat Goliath? David couldn't even move in Saul's armor and decided to fight without wearing any. The weapons that David brought into battle are but shepherd's tools. Yet David was able to defeat Goliath and brought victory to Israel. 
the battle between David and Goliath is only four verses out of the very long chapter. Only four verses. Verses 48 to 40, uh, 51. It shows that the battle is really short. Goliath stood no chance at all. There's no need to explain much. And many times we are very quick to say, oh, we should be like David. We should follow his example. But the question is, can we actually be like David? Especially as we consider in the aspect of defeating the giant. Can we be like David? So I believe perhaps it is not us who became like David, but someone who is greater. I believe David is actually foreshadowing or pointing towards a messianic figure. See, just one chapter before, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, David was actually already anointed as the next king, yeah, as Samuel went to find his family. And now in chapter 17, we are given a contrast of two kings. Saul, the failed king, and David, the next king. And it is David, the anointed one, who is the coming king who saves Israel. And this points to Christ, the anointed one, who is the king of kings, and the one who ultimately saves all his people. Other than that, we also see how David is also portrayed as the shepherd of Israel when he uses shepherd tools in the battle. I think this also carries a very important symbolic meaning because David is protecting the flock of God from a mad wild dog. And this also points us to Christ, who is the good shepherd, who will come and protect his flock and lead them in the right path. So therefore, instead of seeing us becoming David, I think it is far greater to see David as pointing to Christ. And this tells us of good news. The good news is that God already has a plan to defeat the giant. Just as God planned for David to be the saviour of Israel by defeating Goliath, God also has a plan for Jesus Christ to be our saviour in defeating sin and death, which is the greatest giant that we face in life. And therefore, this gives us a picture of assurance. To know that when God is with us, no giant can harm us. And it is also a comfort to know that as we face many giants in life, we do not, we do not need to defeat them. Because the giants in our life has been and will be defeated by our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Now, just as the song we sang just now, it is not I, but true Christ in me. It's not us who will fight, but God who fights. And victory is already for certain when Jesus died on the cross. The giant has been defeated. So I think this is very important for us to remember. So firstly, do not overestimate the giant because God is far greater. But the second one is, in Jesus Christ, all giants has already been defeated. Jesus has fought the war and He has already won it. So the Lord saves us. And because of that, this leads us to the third and final point, which is facing the giant. So when we know that God can and He will defeat the giants in our life, we can now have faith to face them. 
Yeah, David is able to face Goliath because he had faith in the Lord. He clearly sees that God has given victory to him over Goliath. When David rejected Saul's armor, it shows that the Lord is enough. David's focus is always on God. He never let his focus get out of that. He fought Goliath, firstly. The reason he wants to fight Goliath is because he cannot stand him insulting the people of God. So his reason is already based with a focus in God. And then the battle is fought in the name of the Lord. So even in the process, his focus is still in God. And finally, David said the result of the battle is that God will be known throughout the earth. So even in the result, the focus is still in God. So the beginning, his purpose in the process as he was fighting, and the result, David's focus is always in God. So I think we can learn from David in facing our giants. Although in certain aspects, we know that it is not us who defeat, but through Christ. But we still also have the role to face the giants. So when we have faith in God, it means that we also fix our eyes on Him. And when we remember the work of the cross and everything else that Jesus has done for us, then we will realize that the giants the troubles, the problems, even sin in life will seem insignificant. Of course, this does not mean that our struggles are insignificant. It does not imply that. It also does not mean that our, our problems will magically disappear. But it does mean that God is much greater than all of it. And that is why we can face our giants, just as David is able to face Goliath. I do not know what kind of giants you have in your life at this moment, but I believe there are. Some people may even have multiple giants that they have to face. Some of us may have been facing the giants for a long period of time. And maybe you have starting to be tired weary, anxious, and perhaps even disappointed. But yet through this simple story that we have always been familiar with, we are reminded that we can face it. We can face it because God is with us. Therefore, we always need to keep our focus on God, to keep our eyes in him. In the pre chorus of a song named Voice of Truth by Casting Crowns, it says, But the giant's calling out my name and he laughs at me, reminding me of all the times I tried before and failed. The giant keeps on telling me time and time again, Boy, you'll never win. You'll never win. And sometimes this is our situation. We probably also feel that we'll never win. Saul and the Israelites thought for sure that they are going to be defeated. And die, enemy so powerful. Yet, God showed them otherwise. The David and Goliath story reminds us how God defeated giants in the past and he will do the same in our life and it is through Christ Jesus who already won the battle so the challenge for us today again is are we willing to stand our ground to have faith and face the giants let us pray
Father, as we come before you this morning, as we once again look at a very familiar story, we are reminded of your greatness, O Lord, on how powerful you are. But Lord, as we come before you today, we acknowledge that we are weak. We are brittle. And we easily fall, especially in the midst of the various giants in our life. Lord, we are tired. We are afraid. And sometimes we cannot even imagine how our future can be like or how the next step can be. But yet this story reminds us that in you there is victory. So therefore, Lord, help us to always keep our eyes in you. That as we turn to you and look at you, we realize that you are so much greater than all of our troubles and all of our problems. For you are the greatest. And as we look to the cross, we are reminded that victory is always there and is already there. So Lord, therefore, in our brokenness, in our weary spirit, we want to continue to trust in You. For as Jesus brought victory on the cross, help us to have this hope, knowing that we will continue to experience victory in our life, to overcome all of those struggles and problems. So with this, Lord, we want to respond with faith. We want to stand our ground. We want to face our giants. That no matter how big they are, with you helping us, we can stand. So Lord, I pray for each and every one of us here this morning that we can have that strength in you to face the giants. That even Hope Community Baptist Church can stand together as a body to also face the giants that the church are experiencing. That in you, we will indeed have victory. So we really give you thanks for your help. We give you thanks for your grace. We give you thanks for everything that you have done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us now all arise to sing the doxology. blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you in the midst of your struggles and giants in life. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you, giving you hope and strength. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you peace that you have comfort in the midst of your problems. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So the service is over. Thank you for coming and you